comes to working on mechanical things, I guess you'd have to class me as an old timer. That's right, an old timer. You know, I've been working on cars, boats, and airplanes for over 50 years now. And you know, when it comes to old timers, I don't want to offend anybody out there, but I, I'm an old timer. I know what it's like. You don't like to, you know, if you know there's a certain way you do things, you don't want to change. You know, if it's working, the way you've done things over the years, uh, the type of equipment or tools that you're using are working, then, you know, why change? But, and I think that's true when it comes to batteries. You know, and you think back, I want you to think back about, upon your own battery experience, particularly if you're a do-it-yourselfer, have owned a number of different cars and work on your own cars, you know how frustrating batteries can be. Here are the problems. You let the car sit, the battery drains down, it goes dead, and it stays dead for a couple weeks, and that's really hard on a battery and you find out it's never the same again. Or you test the battery with a voltometer and it shows 12.8 volts. You think that's great. Well, why will it only crank the car once and then after that the car won't start? What's with that? And, and you know, you, you try to figure out how, how to charge the batteries. You know, if you overcharge a battery, you're going to damage it. And then you don't, you, you forget to turn the battery charger on. This is a typical battery charger. I've been using battery chargers like this for, you know, 40 years and you plug it in and you hook it up and you set it to two amps or 10 amps and you walk away. Well, oops, it's supposed to shut off automatically, but half of them don't do. They go down into a cycling charge and they're clicking on and off. And I'll never forget the time one of my employees hooked this up to one of my batteries. And I came back into the shop the next day and I heard this kind of gurgling noise and the battery was boiling in the car. Now that is really dangerous. So this isn't something, you know, batteries can be dangerous. They're gassing off uh, explosive gas and, you know, you, you have to be, you have to pay attention to these things. And the, and the problems go on and on, you know, okay, what do I do with this old battery? I, I think it's okay, but it's not okay. Do I throw it away or do I try to maybe put some of this super formula in, in it to resurrect it? And then you get into gel cell batteries or, um, you know, spiral wound batteries that are totally different, like the Optima. And their charge rates need to be different. And the way they're charged has to be different. And the way they, they're maintained. And you can have some of these Optima batteries drain down. And if you don't charge them properly, you'll think they're bad. And that's tough after you've paid $130 to $160 for one of these batteries. So for me, being an old timer, I realized this must have been six, seven years ago that I, you know, maybe there's a better way to deal with batteries. I'm talking about car batteries. And a lot of this started from my experience in RC aircraft as the whole lithium uh, battery thing came to the forefront in model aircraft. And I, and I got a hold of, you're looking right here at my charging station for my electric airplanes. And that is very sophisticated compared to something like this. You know, here I'm going to test my battery and put this load tester on it and I push the lever. Well, what's it really telling me? It's telling me, well, this battery isn't very strong, but how, is it bad? Do I know if the, you know, and then I can use a hydrometer. It's kind of messy. And this will give me an indication of the different cells, but you know, it takes a long time. Why can't I just plug something into a battery and find out how the plates are and what's the condition and, and how much cold cranking power is really left in the battery? So, you know, after, for instance, look at this. Here's one of my 22 volt batteries that I use in one of my RC jet aircraft. And this thing really cranks. We're talking 100 amps this puts out when I have that airplane under power. And when I want to test the battery, I can plug it in to my balance tester here and it will tell me right here. It'll give me the voltage in each cell and it'll also tell me the percentage of charge left in this battery. You know, if you take off with a low battery in your model airplane, you're going to crash. So it's important. It's a little different than a car. But once again, I got thinking, hey, why isn't there some sort of cool thing that I can manage my batteries? And there's ways to, to kind of recover a battery that's gone bad, a lithium uh, battery that has drained down too low. There's some tricks you can use to get it back to life, but you need to know what you're doing and you have to have the right equipment. So what I want to do, this is part one in the battery charging and testing video series that I'm going to do. 
And in part two, I'm going to bring you into this in a little more detail, and we're going to talk about some of the new smart chargers that are on the market today.